What is up? I am excited to start a new series for our youth ministry. I've been struggling with just being concerned over the situation where so many of our students, not just here in our church, but around our country, are struggling with anxiety, especially these days. And so I'm going through this book by Max Lucado. It's called Anxious for Nothing. And through this book, I'm, I'm going to do this video series on how to deal with anxiety. And so I hope that you'll take a chance to watch it. Maybe some of the videos will be a little longer than what I normally would do. Um, but I just hope that uh, you'll take the time to watch this, um, whether you're a, a youth um, or a parent or just somebody else who happens to be watching this. Because my goal is to help you um, deal with any anxiety issues that you're dealing with. So I want to start off on this because Max Lucado wrote something really interesting here in the first chapter. He wrote, Anxiety and fear are cousins but not twins. Fear sees a threat. Anxiety imagines one. Fear screams, get out. Anxiety ponders, what if? Fear results in fight or flight. Anxiety creates doom and gloom. Fear is the pulse that pounds when you see a coiled rattlesnake in your front yard. Anxiety is the voice that tells you never ever for the rest of your life walk barefooted through the grass. There might be a snake somewhere. And so you can see from this that fear is a normal thing. Um, fear can protect us. If a car is coming toward us, it can keep us safe. It can be that thing that causes us to jump out of the way. But anxiety is something that is not always normal. It's not always a thing that, uh, that, that it really is healthy. And so my goal through this is to help us see what the Bible says about anxiety and how we can best fight this. So you guys know that anxiety is, is an epidemic. It's an issue that's, that's facing um, our country. Get this, in any given year, nearly 50 million Americans will deal with the effects of a panic attack, phobias, or other anxiety disorders. And the United States of America is now the most anxious nation in the world. In fact, there are many nations, uh, most probably all nations, that are less anxious than we are. And yet they don't have what we have. And further, it's been discovered that when people from other countries come here as, as new American citizens, they tend to kind of fall into the same anxious patterns that we do. So there's something about our culture that brings about anxiety. And I found it interesting that the, uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association cited a study that indicates a, a, an exponential increase in depression. Listen to this. People of each generation in the 20th century were three times more likely to experience depression than the preceding generation. And here in the 21st century, it's only continued that we, we know, it's, it's a matter of fact, that Gen Z, the generation that our youth and many of our kids are in, even some of our college kids are still in Gen Z. Um, this generation is struggling at a level that, that I, I would see as an epidemic. The most depressed, most anxious generation in U.S. history. Our college students are feeling this effect. In fact, um, a lot of our college students... Um, are, are either millennials or they're Gen Z. And so uh, you know, I guess there could be some older adult that's gone back to college, but the regular college age students either fall into the millennial generation or into Gen Z. And here's what a, a study that involved more than 200,000 incoming freshmen, here's what they found out. Students reported all-time lows in overall mental health and emotional stability. And consider this, um, Robert Leahy, I want to find this note here, Robert Leahy, who is a psychologist, reports that the average child today here in America exhibits the same level of anxiety as the average psychiatric patient in the 1950s. You get that? That the average 
child, whether it's a, a kid or a youth today, shows the same amount of anxiety, those same levels, as a psychiatric patient in the 50s. So something has definitely turned out wrong. And we can look at causes all day, changes in, in, in our culture, um, stresses in our culture, the things that we live with every day. Add to that that, that now we're in a, a, a pandemic, that we're in a situation where political unrest um, and, 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 and di different things going on is constantly bombarding us. And yet because of our smartphones and our, our TVs and our computers and, and all of these things, we're, we're right in front of it all the time. And so we don't ever really escape it. And, and then you add on top of that the normal things like, like financial issues and marriage issues and home life and school and all the other stresses that we have. It's no wonder that we're in this situation. So you would think that as Christ followers, we would be less likely to be anxious, right? I mean, the Bible tells us not to be anxious, but that's just not the case. We find that within the church, people are just as anxious as people outside of the church, only because we're taught in Scripture not to be anxious, and we hear the preacher say, don't be anxious. Now we have the added guilt of feeling anxious to add to our anxiety. And so I want us to take a look at the Bible to see kind of what uh, what we can take away from today, and the next week we'll dig a little deeper into this. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. Now, this is interesting because the Apostle Paul, who wrote this, could have said, don't be worried about most things. I mean, there's some things that you can be worried about, but by and large, you don't want to be worried. But that's not what he said. He said, don't be worried about anything, nothing, not a zilch, zero. And so this, he didn't really leave a lot of wiggle room for us. And I think that he gives us a formula um, that, we can, that we can learn from here in this chapter. So Max Licato in this book wrote, The presence of anxiety is unavoidable, but the prison of anxiety is optional. So yes, there's going to be anxiety, but we don't have to be consumed. We don't have to be imprisoned by our anxiety. We can overcome this. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn there. Or if you have the app on your phone, you can look this up. You can pause the video and, and take a look at it. But I want you to be able to look at this with me. Philippians 4, 4 through 8 says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So in these five verses, Paul gives us four challenges that if we do, we can find our way to peace. And if you think in terms of an acrostic, I want you to take the word calm and uh and, and and notice how he lays this out. First is to celebrate God's goodness. That's the C in calm. Celebrate God's goodness. In verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. That's always being full of joy. Now, this is a guy who, when he wrote this, was in prison, not in a good situation. And so it wasn't like he, he had a situation where life was so great he could say, Be joyful. He was in a bad situation. And yet he still wrote to always be full of joy. Now the A in the word calm is to, is stands for ask God for help. In verse 6, he tells us, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. The L in calm is leave your concerns with him. So he tells us in verse 6, pray about everything. Tell God what you need with thanksgiving. 
which brings us to the M in the word calm. And this is meditate on good things. So think about things that are good and worthy of praise. Verse 8, he lists things that we need to think about, things that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and worthy of praise. This would be a, a, a good little bit of homework for you, I guess. If you could take some time to write out these kinds of things. So make a list of what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, and, and just think on those things. And so try to turn off the negative stuff and try to turn on the positive things. So calm, celebrate, ask, leave, meditate, calm. And that's our goal, is to get to a place of peace. Now, maybe you don't know this, but the Bible is Kendall's most highlighted book. And within that book, the most highlighted passage is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. So almost the entire scripture that we just read. And what that tells me is that you are not alone. A lot of other people are searching. A lot of other people are struggling. And so don't feel like you're the only one who needs to hear this. Uh, don't feel like you're abnormal or like there's something wrong with you. It's not a sin to be anxious. And so don't, uh, don't feel that way. So in the book, Max Lucado writes out a prayer. And I want to close with, with this prayer for us today. Here's what he wrote. Dear Lord, you spoke to storms. Would you speak to ours? You calm the hearts of the apostles. Would you calm the chaos within us? You told them to fear not. Say the same to us. We are weary from our worry, battered and belittled by the gales of life. O Prince of Peace, bequeath to us a spirit of calm. Quench anxiety. Stir courage. Let us know less fret and more faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. And this is a great prayer for us. And so I, I hope and I pray that you will find more peace in your life by focusing on those things that are, are positive and those things that are scriptural um, and, and maybe find some calm. I'm always here for you, so don't be afraid to reach out to me if you ever need anything. Have a great week.